What was your position here when Jennifer was murdered? Um, in 1983, I was, I had been here at John Carroll for two and a half years. I was full time in the religion department and um, much younger at that point in time. I remember this incident very clearly because it was such a shock to the community. Did you see Jennifer or did you interact with her directly? No, I did not. I knew her, I knew who she was, um, but my friend, um, the late father Ken Farrable, um, taught her uh, in the religion class. I also taught freshman religion, but I had different students, some of whom were friends of Jenny's. So how does, um, how does that kind of information come to a school? Does it come that day, a couple of days later? How mm -hmm. does the school find out about something like this? I remember the timeline of what happened that weekend. Um, we were off of school Monday, the Monday after she disappeared. School was closed for the day. And when we got back to school on Tuesday, she was listed on the, the absent report. Um, so all of her teachers and everyone knew she was absent that day, but there was a lot of scurrying around. There, uh, the police department had come over. They were interviewing her teachers and other persons to see if anybody had any information on her whereabouts. And we were all um, very uh, alarmed and we were very uh, concerned because we knew that she was missing. Um, we were shocked when the information came to us later that week that Jenny's body had been found and that that she had been um, that she had been killed. How did you get the news? Um, our principal then was the late Donald Sudbrink, and uh, he kept the faculty aware from the beginning that this young lady was missing. And uh, and when we got news later that week, he you know he let the faculty know about it, and then he made an announcement to the students over the intercom. It was a very unusual thing to make such an announcement, but in those days uh, we did not have the class meetings and the you know the the personal connection um, to be able to announce news that was so serious. Um, we prayed for her, and then the following week, we actually had a memorial mass here in our gym. It was a tough time. What was it like for the students? Were they coming to you? What kinds of things were they telling you? Well, the students were all in shock. This girl was in the ninth grade. I think she had just turned 15 years old because she had an early birthday. And, um, you know, when you're in the ninth grade, it is the farthest thing from in your mind that someone is going to die who's one of your friends, you know, one of young teenagers. They believe that they're invincible, that, you know, they're happy-go-lucky, and they were in shock, just totally in shock. Um, life went on around here, classes took place and things like that, but the student body definitely had a different tone. And it is very interesting that during that year, it was a really tragic year for us here at John Carroll because um, Christmas week, which was you know just two months before that, three months before that, two of our wrestlers died in a very serious car accident that also had the third wrestler in the car was in very serious shape um, down at shock trauma. And you know here we're just reeling and recovering from the shock of two of the boys who had died and having memorial mass when we got back in January for those two boys and then to have Jenny go missing and then find out days later that you know someone had found her body. Apparently he was part of the um, you know, sheriff's department that he had found her body and um, you know to go into the same thing all over again, letting the students know, comforting them, explaining to them that we didn't know why God would let such a thing happen because that's what students want to know. How could this possibly happen to someone as young as we are? After that she was murdered, from what I understand, some John Carroll students were questioned. Um, I don't know if it was in a suspect capacity or just the, for information, but mm -hmm. you know, once you recover from the shock of the loss, and then mm -hmm. you start getting into the, we need to know what happened, and your mm -hmm. students become involved in that. Mm -hmm. What is the process that the community goes through at that point? 
My memory is very limited about that. I know that there were teachers here who were questioned if they had any ideas what had happened to her when she was missing and then after she had been discovered if they had any leads, any information. Students who were Jenny's friends were also questioned and um, but as far as I know none of their information ever led to any real um, proof or any real leads. And Jenny had been a somewhat you know, troubled girl. She had ran away a couple times mm -hmm. from what we understand. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that the community here had efforted to sort of help correct with her, that sort of behavior? I don't think many of us knew about that until after she had died and information came out. Perhaps those who were closer to her, maybe those who taught her or were her closest friends in the freshman and sophomore class might have known things like that about Jenny. I didn't know anything of that nature at all until it came out in the news after her death. It was a concern um, to me that someone so young, you know, would go missing and, um, and certainly just a tragic shock find that they found her body later and that she'd been killed. Um, over the 30 years that I've been here at school, every year we have a memorial mass, um, either November 1st or 2nd for All Saints Day or All Souls Day. And that has been um, a, a very sad um, tradition and ritual in our community where we read the names of all of the students and all of the graduates from John Carroll who have died and now with more technology advances we're able to also show slides with their pictures. So this upcoming Tuesday on the second we're going to have this memorial mass and again Jenny's spirit, her life, her memory is kept alive in the John Carroll community through this liturgy that we hold and those of us who have been here long enough to remember Jenny personally it really is, is very tragic when we see her picture and know that that was the only yearbook picture that was taken of her because she had died when she was in ninth grade. What did you go through when you were you know, learning about this young girl? What, is, what do you go through as a mom, mm -hmm. you know, as a, as a woman, mm -hmm. understanding what happened to her personally? Well, when it, at that time I was unmarried and, um, and I remember what a terrible shock it was to realize that somebody at John Carroll, you know, an area that was fairly sheltered in Bel Air, you know, that such a thing could happen in our area. It shocked me and it, it, still, it, it still overwhelms me to think about it. As a mother now, looking back on all these years and thinking that her family has had no closure, that whomever um, caused her death has been out there for all those years and that no one in the family or from the John Carroll community has been able to resolve that situation. Like I said, each year when Jenny's name is read and her picture is flashed on the screen at Mass, we remember that we don't know. We don't know what happened to her. And as a mother, that that's an overwhelming feeling to know that her mother is going through that. What would you hope for, say, somebody out there who's gone through your story and knows a, something? A lot of years have gone by. I'm, I'm hoping that with the reopening of this case, that if someone has some information, a lot of times little things add up, a little bit of information here and there adds up. And who knows, maybe there's somebody out there that 27 years later, their conscience is speaking to them very loudly now that maybe, maybe we will get somewhere. I pray that this case can be closed and that Jenny's family can rest in peace knowing that there is closure, that they know what happened to their daughter, their sister, and uh, that we hear in the community when we remember her each year for our memorial mass that we know that this has been solved. Why does John Carroll do this? You know, I mean, it's at this point, you know, the school's 40-some, 50-some, am, am 
1964, so we're 46 years old, we getting close to our 50th anniversary here. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a Catholic school, we think it's so important that, you know, that we remember those who have died and it gives the students each year a chance to remember those in their own families privately who have died. And, uh, but as a community, we really want everyone to know that we don't forget if you've been part of our community, that you will live on forever, you know, that we'll remember you and your loved ones during our memorial mass. And uh, our slideshow includes students like Jenny. There's only a few who died when they were actually students. Most are graduates and faculty members who have gone. And um, you know, it gets very emotional for many of us, especially those of us who've been around here for a long time, because as we see these faces, as we hear these names, we remember those who are our students, those who are our children's friends, those who taught here and were our friends and our colleagues and our mentors. And it's quite an emotional memory for us. But it, it makes me glad, though, that the Clay Brooks know that John Carroll has not forgotten their daughter. That's real important to me and real important to our school.